Good evening, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on EOS. Hope you guys are having a wonderful evening. Um, EOS was operating with, first of all, guys, let me address the uh, elephant in the room. I usually don't like to uh, talk about technical analysis and fundamental analysis in the same, uh, you know, in the same conversation, but uh, today you kind of have to. Um, I'm sure everybody's heard the uh, Winklevoss twins um, and the CBOE had an application for an ETF, a Bitcoin ETF that was rejected today by the uh, SEC, which is a little unexpected, I believe. Now, there are still other applications for uh, Bitcoin ETFs that I believe they're going to uh, you know, decide on going forward in the future. I think they pushed those decisions off until September. So there still may be a Bitcoin ETF. Um, it's just going to, it's not, it's not going to be anytime soon, at least uh, not in the next month, like some were hoping. So it'll be interesting to see how the market reacts to this news, guys. Obviously, in the short term, we can see prices operating within this wedge here as it approached the apex and, and the news came out. We can see price ended up breaking down. Um, if we uh, look inside this microstructure, we go swing low, swing high, we can see price uh, bounced perfectly off the 618. So that is rather bullish. Um, not that the not that this is bullish news, but it is. It, it, if anything, it's a you know the the glass half full uh, view of this is there is still some market structure. The mark the uh, you know the price is still respecting these fibs, so we are still seeing some market structure. That is a good sign. If price does break below the 618 fib level, um, which is about 8.20, and then uh, more than likely it's going to come down in here to this demand zone between 7.95, 7.60, somewhere thereabouts. Um, I'm not going to be playing any long positions. Uh, certainly not any long positions anytime soon. I may play a quick scalp trade if the uh, price doesn't drop into this zone. Possibly scalp a quick trade from uh, uh, 7.70 uh, somewhere thereabouts to uh, expecting uh, 810 but if I do it'll just be very quick and quick out um, very uh, tight stop loss um, so anyway guys, I'm just going to be sitting back at least for the next 12 hours 12 24 hours to see how the market um, absorbs all this news um, as far as uh, to the downside guys as I said I do believe this demand zone at least for now is going to hold between 795 760 um, I am a little more uh, bearish than I am bullish a lot more bearish than I am bullish in the short term um, if this if this demand zone breaks down between 7.60 and uh, 7.95, then I'm going to be looking at this demand zone down here between 9 point, uh, uh, between uh, 6.90 6.60. Um, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying we're preparing for all eventualities or for all possibilities, I should say. Um, to the upside, guys, I'm going to be looking for the extension of this. Uh, we can see this the uh, wicks are coming up, creating a series of. Let me go back to the four hour. You can see a little better, creating a series of lower highs. If I extend that wick, if we can see um, a candle come up and break above this uh, descending, um, what is acting as a descending resistance line, then I'm going to start getting um, um, a little more positive on the market. Start seeing that we may start seeing, um, you know, price start to turn around. Um, if I look at this from an Elliott perspective, guys, um, this would be a subwave one, two coming down for the bottom of wave two. We could certainly make a case that that is the bottom of wave two. If I pull out my uh, if I zoom in here on the hourly, yeah, we can see this subwave one, subwave two. See on a subwave two, we've got a very clear A, B, C. So, you know, just from a pure Elliott point of view, guys, we could make a case that the uh, that, that that bottom is in. I'm not saying that it is. Ideally, I would like to see. Uh, ob ideally, obviously, I'd like to see price. I'm a bullet heart guy, so ideally, I'd like to see price just jump off of here and take off. I don't think that's going to happen. I think um, a the the most bullish scenario, the most bullish likely scenario in this um, in this case, is going to be price just kind of moves sideways on top of the 618 fib. Um, if it if the 618 fib can hold, guys, that's going to be a, a bullish sign of strength, certainly, um, and a very bullish sign of strength. So maybe if we just consolidate. The market absorbs this news, and then we could end up taking off from there once uh, once we have that absorbed. Um, but if the 618 breaks, guys, then we're going to be looking for this demand zone down here, as I said. And at that point, I may consider taking a very quick scalp trade, but uh, um, nothing uh, you know, nothing significant with a very very tight stop. To the upside, guys, as always. If for some reason price does end up breaking up and defying all the odds, then we're going to be looking at this, as I said yesterday, guys, we're going to be looking at the top of the supply zone that we have to take out at 945. Again, I don't think we're going to be coming up here anytime soon in the short term, but, uh, you know, anything could happen. This is crypto, so anything could happen, guys. Um, like I said, if we do see price end up breaking this descending resistance here, then I'm going to start, uh, then we'll start um, speculating on possibly breaking the top of the supply zone at 945 or thereabouts. But in the meantime, guys, best case scenario, I think we can just consolidate, move sideways. Um, but I'm expecting 
or preparing for a break of that 618 possibly coming down and testing a psychological number of 8.00, more than likely testing this demand zone, if that 618 breaks, testing this demand zone between 7.95, 7.60, thereabouts. We come over here to longs. We can see longs have not had any kind of a major reaction yet. Um, a little bit of a pullback, but nothing major. Um, so that at least they're holding for now, waiting to see how the market reacts. We'll wait and see how that ends up playing out. Looking at the shorts, shorts are also moving sideways, just kind of hanging out, waiting to see how the market ends up playing out, guys. So. Um, no real, excuse me, no real major reaction yet, which you could say that's a rather bullish sign considering that we haven't had a complete breakdown of the market. Um, that, you know, that is a, a, uh, a bullish sign, at least short term, that uh, this was not just all pure uh, FOMO expecting an approval of the ETF next month, guys. But uh, as I said, it is still very, very early, and we're going to have to wait and see how the market does um, absorb this news, guys. So I wish I, had, I wish I could give you more clear analysis. Um, I just can't right now. Uh, right now, guys, it's just a lot of uncertainty in the market. Um, looking at our indicators, we can see stock RSI is reaching oversold zones, at least on the four-hour. Um, the four-hour RSI is sitting at almost dead neutral at about uh, uh, 47 or thereabouts. Histogram is showing a uh, um, start to is started to tick uh, down into bearish territory. We can see the uh, signal line, the MACD line, are both trending down, looking rather bearish, at least on the four-hour. Coming over here to the daily. On uh, the daily, as you would expect, it takes a lot longer for it to react to this news. We can see that the uh, MACD line is starting to trend over and move sideways. Um, we can see that the histogram is starting to trend down as it starts to absorb that news. We can see we are overbought on the uh, stock RSI on the daily. Um, so more than likely, we're going to start to see a reset there. Um, looking at the daily, uh, daily RSI, still operating within this wedge. Plenty of room to drop. Um, it, obviously, if we break above this wedge, it's going to be a rather bullish sign. I'm not expecting that to happen anytime soon, but we'll keep an eye on that. If that does happen, I'll certainly get my uh, get my attention. So anyway, guys, I wish I had better news for you. I wish I could give you a clearer uh, indication of where price is going. But right now, guys, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of waiting to see how the market absorbs this news. Um, and as long as we can maintain above the 618 FIB level, guys, possibly get a very strong bounce. That's going to be, uh, or, or at least a bounce, that's going to be a rather bullish sign, even if we can just move sideways. As I said, that's, that's going to be a bullish sign. So anyway, that's about all I have for now, guys. I'll kind of update you as the market goes on. If we, if we see any major movement, I'll try to give you guys a quick update and let you guys know what I think and what my thoughts are. But for now, guys, more than likely, we're going to be moving sideways. I'm not making any, uh, um, I'm not making any trades. This is a completely no trade zone for me until we do get market reaction and see how the market does um, absorb all this news. So in the meantime, guys, please trade safe. Um, have a great evening. This is working. Signing out.